Good morning, my name is Irene and I'm an illustrator and art teacher from the Netherlands and I'm based in the UK. I wanted to paint a little picture today and I'm not using any references, this is just a really chilled out little painting exercise and I'm inviting you to join in and paint along with me or grab yourself some other materials and just get creative this morning. My sort of New Year's resolution for 2022 is to make more time to enjoy making art. Um, and it sounds a little bit silly for someone who makes a living out of art, because that's the dream, right? To be able to uh, make a full-time living from uh, something you enjoy so much as making art. And sometimes I can get caught up a little bit in client work and in having to make work for my portfolio and things that I think have to be perfect. And it can be really great sometimes to just make art for the sake of experimenting and... Um, yeah, just just enjoying it without any expectations or um, yeah things having to be perfect and I'm going to share that journey here on YouTube. I think um, YouTube is a really great uh, social media platform I really love being on here and I decided that this year I'm going to post regularly and really um, invest a bit more time in creating this YouTube channel. I paint a lot for children's books and um, in 2021, so last year already, <laughs> I created four children's books um, some of them I made uh, digital and then the last one I created completely uh, traditional, so in watercolours and colour pencil. And there's something to say for uh, both of these routes, I think digital art can be really beautiful but personally, I feel that uh, something that is made with pens and paint has an extra bit of warmth to it, an extra bit of um, liveliness that sometimes digital paintings can lack a little bit. And um, I love the process of working with paint and traditional mediums so much that I would never want to go fully uh, digital, I think. I love digital art, but I really, really enjoy traditional art as well, so it will always have a place in my life. Um, and I um, teach a lot of art classes as well, so I paint or draw with traditional mediums almost every single day. Um, there's the occasional day off when I'm doing admin or something else, but most days I'm spending um, yeah, in my art studio creating and I absolutely love it. Today's uh, little picture is um, inspired by my love for books. I wanted to create just a teeny, teeny tiny illustration of um, this girl reading books and being and completely engrossed in the stories. And I am um, using color pencil for the sketch and then gouache to paint it in. The gouache I'm using is a mix of Windsor and Newton and Schminke and um, yeah, these are the brands that are most readily available here in the UK and I'm quite happy with them and they, um, they last long as well so they are the materials that I tend to use most. What I love about using gouache is that you can um, water it down quite well and you can almost use it as translucent as traditional watercolour paint we can also use it in a more traditional gouache sort of style and layer it up thicker and create these really vibrant um, and matte colors that um, you can put on top of each other and they, the coverage is almost complete and um, they give this really sort of stylized matte finish which is sometimes almost velvety. I am um, I use gouache sort of most as a type of paint and I really like the effect that you can create and how you can layer the colors. In 
the little painting I'm making today, you can see um, I made a bit of a sketch, but I did not plan out exactly what colors to use and if if this was a sort of bigger artwork for commission or for a book, I would um, decide on the color scheme beforehand. But I'm just making it up, having fun with it, taking my time to paint, and just uh, yeah, winging it. And I am. Um, I like the process of winging it. You don't always have to plan out everything to the dots, but just to go for what feels good. Uh, yeah, works really well for me. I often receive questions um, from people wondering how to start an art career and how uh, I came about to make art a full-time career, um, what products to use, and I, um, I made a list of some questions that I received over the last few months and I will answer some of them now. So one of the questions I get really regularly is if I always wanted to be an artist and the answer is yes. I have wanted to be an artist since I was very young. I, um, I grew up in the Netherlands and I went to a uh, school called Steiner School which is a worldwide sort of school system but it's quite big in Holland. And there we had lots of art uh, classes. We did painting, drawing, knitting, um, macrame, uh, metal work, woodwork, all sorts of creative creative classes um, were intertwined with sort of our regular classes. And I really loved the creative classes so much. But I never really knew how to go about becoming an artist. It was something that, um, yeah, I just, didn't really know how people did it. So I used to keep a sketchbook and make lots of drawings, but I didn't really have the right materials uh, at home. And because we used to paint so much in school, to make it a habit after school was quite hard. I usually got home really late, and then by the time uh, I was home, you know, I almost had to go to bed. So, um, um, yeah, so most of the creative work that I did during that sort of my teenage years was doing school classes. And I remember I asked my art teacher um, how to go to an art academy, so for, uh, uh, for university. And the teacher told me that uh, I was not good enough to do that. And that really... Um, yeah, shook me quite hard. I remember I really, uh, yeah, was a bit taken aback and I did decide to apply anyway, um, but I didn't really know how to prepare or what, what a portfolio was or, you know, what sort of things to bring. And back then we didn't really have YouTube or social media. There wasn't really any way to ask others uh, about their experience. So I remember I showed up for this uh, application round I was invited to the, uh, you had to send some work in and then you got invited for a conversation, so I was invited for that. And I just showed up with a pencil and a sketchbook, just a sketch pencil and a sketchbook, uh, thinking that um, for that round where I had to make some sort of assignments on the day, that would be enough. And there were some other people there who had like, boxes full of different art materials and crayons and you know, papers and plastic bits and like, some people had an entire art studio with them and I just showed up with a sketchbook and a pencil thinking that that was enough to get me through um, and uh, it was not. So I uh, ended up going to law school, I studied law, but in the back of my mind I always knew I wanted to become an, uh, an artist and I, um, I really rediscovered art some years ago and I started to create every day again and then from there on it has grown uh, until I could leave my job and become an artist full-time and this is um, yeah this is what I'm doing now. Um, another question is uh, how do you develop an art style and uh, how do you pick what style um, yeah is the best style for you? And I think this is a very hard question to answer. I still think I'm searching for my art style. I, I think the best way of finding your art style is just try as many different things as possible 
En um, ja, dus zie wat je enjoy most en where you sort of naturally, naturally gravitate towards. Um, I'm someone who likes doing lots of different things. I don't really like to pick one style or one color or one uh, medium and then stick with that for you know a really long time. I like to do lots of different things. So um, I think within my artwork you can recognize my style. It doesn't matter if it's paint or digital or color pencil or what medium I'm using. Um, but I, I have a lot of variety in my work. And because I'm using so many different mediums, my uh, style still changes a lot as well. Um, so this is a bit of a hard question for me to answer, but I would recommend just try things out and try not to focus too much about picking a style. Um, yeah, just do what you love most and what you enjoy most and also what you can afford. Um, if you have color pencils already at home, Maybe start with those and see how you feel about it. And then at some point you can move on to different mediums. I would not recommend investing lots of money in buying 100 different art supplies. And you might not use half of them. So yeah, just start with what you have and experiment and see you know, where it takes you, that journey. Um, a question I get a lot is uh, if I use references. And I do. I use quite a lot of photo references, um, especially in my classes. If you ever joined any of my art classes, you will notice that the um, that each class we paint or draw from a different reference. Um, and I use those paintings uh, for other things as well. Sometimes I share them on social media or use, use them for other things. Um, and I think using a reference can be a really helpful tool to get started. And it can also be really great to paint without a reference um, on occasions. It just, it's a different vibe. I use references and I also paint without. When you do use references, I think a really good way of using them is having multiple references. So say you wanted to make a painting of someone riding a bicycle. Instead of just finding one photo and just copying that exact photo, Maybe look at four, five, six photos and see if you can use those to create your own version of someone riding a bike. Um, especially if you use, you know, if you want to use your work commercially, I think using uh, multiple references really helps making your work unique. And another good tip is to use photos from stock photo websites um, or make your own photos even better. Because the, um, you know, most photos that you can find on Google, they are copyrighted. The photographer holds the rights and you cannot just copy them and sell them. Um, copy them in a different medium and then sell them. So you have to be very wary of that. The best way of using references is make your own photos. And if you cannot do that, there's heaps of stock photo websites where you can uh, get photos that are free of copyright. Uh, Yep, some are paid for, some are free, but there's a whole library of resources out there online. Um, another way that I really like painting is just from using life. So go out in nature, sit somewhere, paint a landscape. Um, go sit in a shopping center and watch the people walk by and just make sketches of people. Um, it's a little bit harder the last two years with COVID, but I think, yeah, just... Drawing what you see is a really great way of practicing. Um, yeah, sort of your, it's almost like your hand eye coordination. What do you see in them? Transferring that onto the paper. Um, let me see, I have a list of questions here. So, um, what my work day looks like. Ah, well, my work day is, um, I have two types of work days. They're usually quite similar. Um, I either have a day where I have art classes that I'm running. And then the art classes sort of determine, um, yeah, the schedule of my day. Or I have days that are completely free to do whatever I want. Uh, and that includes 
making art, um, doing my administration, maintaining my website, writing my newsletter, all sorts of other things, filming YouTube videos. So I usually plan the bigger projects on days when I don't have art classes and then smaller projects on days where I have art classes because then I can do them in between the classes. And nowadays I can run my classes fairly smooth because I um, am more practiced. I know how to go about it, how to set up, and it doesn't take me lots of time to set up. So um, I can usually make an artwork or something and quickly put it in the way to the side and then set up for my class in 15 minutes or so. Um, when I first started, it took me much longer to prepare for a class, but nowadays I can do it quite fast. So I can swap in between tasks quite quickly. Um, yeah, so, and I try to make art every morning, some sort of art, either work in my sketchbook or um, yeah, do some something for a commission in the morning. Because I find that the light in the morning in my studio is just the best light to paint with. Um, yeah, natural light just makes a huge difference when you're painting or drawing. So um, I tend to utilize that as much as possible in painting in the mornings and then afterwards, sort of after lunch or in the afternoon, I tend to do more as many stuff. But yeah, and I'm my days, I'm, I'm quite free in how I assign my own time. So if I want to go for a walk during the day, I can do so, but I'm also often working in the weekends. And it's, a, it's definitely not a nine to five job. I probably work more hours now than um, when I worked in finance and uh, I had really long hours in an office. It just spread out differently. <laughs> um, people often ask me if I do custom paintings. So I have my list of questions here. Um, yeah, of course I do. I make lots of custom paintings. Um, I used to do a lot of like um, portrait commissions and pet portraits, but I've sort of moved away from that a little bit. Um, once in a while, I still open my shop for for commissions, sort of for personal commissions. But I tend to work more for businesses, uh, for websites. I really love to work with green businesses, especially if you know organizations that have some sort of um, yeah green initiative or a social um, aspect to it or like a charity, like things like that. Then where I feel like my um, my my own personal values align with the mission of the organization, then um, yeah, these are the type of organizations I love to work with most. Um, but yeah, no, I, um, I do do portraits sometimes, depending a bit on my workload and how busy I am. I tend to find that um, when you do a personal portrait, um, it takes me just as long as a commercial portrait or a commercial assignment. Um, yeah, and for me, sort of, from a commercial aspect, it makes more sense to focus on the slightly bigger projects. Um, my social media use, I get a lot of questions about this. I split my time a lot between, um, I, this is not the right answer. I, I use social media. I think um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, they all have a place in my life and in my business and they are really great ways of promoting uh, my business um, but for me it also can be quite draining so I regularly take time out from social media um, and I have considered on occasions to completely quit my accounts I think my accounts are fairly small um, but interactions are quite high so it's it's a really good way for me to build a community and to chat to people um, yeah, to see what people are making and to, especially for people who join my classes, who have questions, you know, about things. Um, but I do have groups on my website as well where people can post questions. So if you want to be in touch with me, you can do so on my website as well. Um, and there are some community groups there where people respond and a bit like an, um, like forums, uh, which I sort of prefer. I 
I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Instagram. I think it can be a really great place to uh, get inspiration and make connections, but it's also a source of a uh, bit of a time drain and um, yeah, it's easy to start comparing your own work with others. So I try to not do that too much. So I don't really know if I answered this question right, but I am. Um, if you want to grow your Instagram account, I really don't think I'm the right um, authority on that. Uh, yeah, on that topic because it's not a high priority for me. Um, which sounds strange because you know, although a lot of artists get a lot of work through Instagram, um, I don't. Most of my work is because people contact me directly or they find my website or. Um, yeah, because I go to an event and I speak to people, things like that. Um, social media only has a small part in me being found. So, yeah, interesting enough. I do things quite the old-fashioned way, I think. Um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about growing your Instagram, yeah, there, there's lots of people who know much more about this than I do. Um, how do you know when a painting is finished? Um, I I don't always know when a painting is finished. Sometimes I put an artwork away and then I look at it a few days later and I suddenly see things that I want to add or change. Um, sometimes you can carry on a little bit too long and then actually it was already finished and then I feel like I've not ruined it but I've edit things that were a bit unnecessary in the end. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a gut feeling. I think it comes with experience when you know when to stop. Um, and I don't always get it right either. When I run a class, I have a certain amount of time for painting, so I know how much I can do in an hour and a half. My, most of my classes are an hour and a half long. So when... Um, yeah, when that time is over, my painting has to be finished. So I sort of know how much I can do in that time frame. Um, but when I do work for uh, projects or commissions, they often take me much longer than an hour and a half. So it's um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a bit of a gut feeling, I guess. Yeah, sorry, I know that uh, I'm not sure if this is a very helpful answer. Um, I think one of the things to keep in mind is that it is important to not be afraid to do too much. If you are constantly worried about you know, adding something to your painting and then ruining it, you will get in the way of you know, creating freely and being in your creative flow. So um, I would really recommend just paint and it's okay if you mess a painting up once in a while, if you add something that you don't like. Um, you can often take things away after you've edited them as well. Like not everything is as permanent as you think. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to mess things up. Um, you can only learn if you are allowed to be messy and to um, yeah to make mistakes, right? Um, What inspires me? Well, I find inspiration in heaps of different things. Um, I usually say that my main source of inspiration are sort of the folk tales and the fairy tales that I grew up with. I absolutely love a good story. I love reading a book. I love watching fear films and mostly things that are a bit magical. Um, that reminds me of my childhood. I, I'm not very good with scary films or scary books or things that are too dark or too sinister. Um, I like things that are light and make me feel good and are enjoyable. So I'm a huge fan of Disney films, Pixel films, uh, Pixar films. Um, I love uh, um, sort of animations. Um, yeah, and these are the these are the sort of stories that I remember from being a child as well. Yeah, reading stories with a bit of magic and full of hope and possibilities. So yeah, this is the way I like to look at the world. And uh, I think this is also why I like to make 
children's books so much because I am, um, um, yeah, it reminds me of being a child myself. I like to put myself in the in the shoes of a child and view the world through their eyes. Um, yeah, more than I like to be around children. <laughs> I like to sort of feel like a child. Um, I think I have time for one more question. Let me have a look at my look at my list. Um, can we see your studio? Yeah, I will. I will film a studio tour at some point. I always keep changing things, and then it's really messy again. Uh, and I feel like for a studio tour, it needs to be sort of tidy and perfect. And studio tours that you see here on YouTube are always so beautiful. And my office, my uh, studio is quite messy. Um, but I will film one at some point. Um, another question, where can I get prints of your paintings? Well, I uh, sell prints of some of my artwork in my shop. You can go to my website and you can find prints of my work there. Um, and if you see something else that you'd really like, an original, you can always contact me. Um, yeah, and I might sell it to you. I do often use my paper both sides. So that means that my originals, if you buy an original, it often has another painting on the other side. Um, I don't know if that's a clever idea. I just feel like painting paper is yeah, such a nice material. It feels a bit like a waste, so I only use it on one side. So I tend to use both sides. Um, and if it's in a sketchbook, then uh, you have to buy a print, of course. But the... Um, yeah, my work is definitely for sale and you can find heaps of it on my website in my shop. Well, I think on that note, I am going to wrap this up. I will play a little bit of calm music towards the end of the video. Uh, and I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you did get some paint or some pencils out and you made something, um, yeah, make sure you tag me in it. I really, really love to see what you've made. It's another huge inspiration for me just to motivate others to create art. If you enjoyed this uh, video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I will be posting videos on um, yeah, sort of a weekly basis. Um, my plan is to really prioritize YouTube this year. So um, there'll be lots of art videos and tutorials and these paint alongs, chatty videos. Um, I have not planned the entire year out yet, but there's definitely a few in the pipeline that will be shared shortly. So um, yeah, make sure you subscribe and you can find me on Instagram as well. Um, so thank you so much for joining today. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Bye.